How's it everyone? This for all mankind video expedition will examine the Martian interplanetary spacecraft of America, Soviet Union, private industry, and affiliated nations during their missions to reach and colonize the red planet in the years surrounding the dawn of the 21st century. After nearly three decades of global space programs and missions, by 1993 the Earth Luna infrastructure had been put in place for crewed missions to Mars. U.S. and Soviet moon colonies with trade stations established helium-3 deuterium harvesting shipped to Earth's fusion reactors, powering this new space-based industry that now comprises the largest global trade economy. The International Spaceport, Lunar Fuel Stations, and Orbital Construction Platforms combined with relay posts in low orbit ensures a constant flow of logistics and personnel from over a dozen launch facilities spread across the planet. NASA, Roscosmos, and Helios Aerospace are the three major competitors building interplanetary spacecraft capable of establishing the first scientific and research outposts on the Martian surface. America's Sojourner program is a heavy interplanetary shuttle with two nuclear thermal propulsion engines powered by the advanced K-32 Nerva reactor drive system. Additionally, the spacecraft is equipped with a secret dual solar sail prototype array deployed from the port and starboard side sections. Unfolded into an extensive span of 550 meters, collecting solar radiation for constant acceleration produced by photons, or simply put, hitching a ride on solar wind. This creates an increased thrust to mass ratio for payloads along the orbital trajectory on the journey to Mars. With a crew of six, the Sojourner's vector thrust maneuver configuration allows for direct atmospheric entry, landing the spacecraft on the Martian surface while deploying habitation modules. Assembled at Jamestown Lunar Colony, the Sojourner Mars mission was scheduled for launch in 1995 from the moon but the deployment window was accelerated due to the Soviet and Helios Aerospace operational timetable schedules. Roscosmos developed a single stage to orbit 80 meter spacecraft at a Soviet Cosmodrome consisting of four heavy thrust nuclear fission engines of a similar design configurations to that of NASA's Nerva Drive. In 1992, issues with the reactor's containment systems caused the Soviets to fall behind schedule, likely to miss the accelerated mission timetable for launch in 1994. Espionage allowed Roscosmos engineers to duplicate NASA's Sojourner's containment field, fast-tracking their program back on schedule. Crewed by seven cosmonauts, the MAPCA-94 had two heavy descent platforms to ferry the habitat modules to the Martian landing site, with the primary booster hull remaining in orbit as the command ship. Two surface ascent modules, or MSAMs, would transport landing teams to and from the surface. Helios Aerospace was the front runner in the Mars race being one of the largest multinational corporations in the private sector. Partnering with Polaris Tourism and their fleet of space planes, Helios established the Space Hotel's ring station as the habitat command section for the journey to Mars. Converted in low Earth orbit from 1991 through 1994, four heavy off-spray methane engines with a drive and fuel section were retrofitted and attached to the converted rain station. Rechristened as the Phoenix, the massive ship was 200 meters in length, capable of deploying two heavy cargo landers and five MSAMs, enabling Helios to establish the most comprehensive base on the Red Planet's surface. Due in part to the sheer size of the converted space station, no practical nuclear propulsion system had been developed for that thrust-to-mass ratio scale, and the larger fusion drives are still in the prototype stages for the Starship Calypso series of vessels that are still in the initial planning stages. However, the methane drives are the most efficient conventional propellant systems in service, allowing an equal amount of constant acceleration with their nuclear competition smaller spacecraft designs. 
After a decade of planning and preparation, the three-way race to Mars started in November of 1994, with the Phoenix departing first from low Earth orbit, followed by the Mars 94 liftoff from the Soviet Cosmodrome and Sojourner 1's Jamestown Lunar Launch all within a two-week period. The 225 million mile journey is projected to last just over 90 days arriving in Martian orbit in mid to late February of 1995 following the first three weeks of sustained acceleration burns by all three spacecraft Helios had achieved a narrow lead over the Americans and Soviets by day 30 of the flight path trajectories. After celebrating a premature victory on board the Phoenix, NASA and the Sojourner unveils their secret weapon by deploying the solar sail arrays named the Jolly Roger system. The harnessed photon radiation acceleration now propels NASA from last to first, gradually overtaking the Phoenix reaching the Red Planet eight days in advance of the competition. Near the end of the Trans-Mars injection paths, the Soviets increased their nuclear thruster maneuver by 20% in an attempt to upturn the race ahead of the other two spacecraft. The rush Soviet engineering combined with the red line burn caused propulsion shutdown crippling Mars 94 with only 72 hours until reactor failure releases fatal radiation upon the cosmonauts. NASA's Sojourner 1 was selected for the rescue mission due to the ship's maneuverability and fuel compatibility, transferring the crew and liquid hydrogen over from the disabled ship with the possibility of continuing the Mars mission instead of returning to Earth. The docking maneuver was an unmitigated success, losing a cosmonaut and two astronauts during a system malfunction that caused a collision. However, the four Soviet crew members were successfully transferred along with the hydrogen fuel, continuing on as a joint U.S.-Russian Mars mission. In late February of 1995, both NASA and Helios crews arrived on the Martian surface with the Sojourner's engines damaged during landing due to low visibility in a dust storm. Over the next five months, the Phoenix's MSAMs and cargo landers consolidated with NASA's habitat modules, establishing the first multinational Mars research base that would eventually become Happy Valley Colony in the upcoming years. During a salvage rover mission in July of 95, two crew members discovered a Soyuz capsule that had been recorded as a failed unmanned probe that had crashed. Everyone was surprised to learn that a North Korean cosmonaut named Jun Lee had been marooned a few hours driving distance from the Happy Valley landing site over the past five months with no communication or contact with the outside world due to the capsule's broken radio transmitter. In September 1994, the People's Republic of Korea launched a two-man plutonium-powered Soyuz rocket on a trans-Mars injection landing mission. The PRK Mars space program was developed in secret utilizing an older designed atomic fueled launch vehicle provided by the Soviets. On February 2nd, PRK-1483 arrived in Mars orbit over two weeks in advance of Sojourner 1 and the Phoenix. After performing the complex docking maneuver, both North Korean cosmonauts transferred into the Soyuz surface module. During atmospheric entry, a guidance malfunction forced the crew to jettison the return vehicle lander caused by a steep ballistic descent. The Soyuz capsule attempted an emergency parachute landing resulting in Jun Lee's awakening as the sole survivor after his fellow cosmonaut succumbed to the impact. This marked February 5, 1995 as the official date for the first human to set foot on Mars. In late 1994, 33 crew members from three separate competing countries and Helios Aerospace embarked on the race to the Red Planet. By mid-1995, two interplanetary spacecraft, the Mars 94 and Sojourner 1, had been abandoned en route and on the Martian surface. 
10 of the crew members perished from malfunctions, accidents, and construction projects, leaving 23 astronauts and cosmonauts surviving the harsh year-long Martian expeditions. The new Happy Valley Multinational Settlement comprised of a collection of retrofitted habitat modules and heavy vehicles located in the Vallis Marineris Canyon, home to 10 of the crew members. The other 13 resided in the Phoenix's artificial gravity ring in low orbit that recently had been purchased by NASA from Helios Aerospace, officially rechristening the Phoenix as the first long-term Martian space station. With no Earth return vehicles surviving or capable of returning the stranded crews, a rescue coalition was formed in July of 1995, consisting that of NASA, Roscosmos, Helios Aerospace, and the North Korean Space Agency, all working together in the International Mars Program for the safe return of their explorers that now had become national heroes. Despite the Soyuz lander crashing on the surface, the PRK Earth return vehicle still remained in orbit with enough plutonium fuel to return home. North Korean flight control transferred the automated guidance over to the Phoenix station to remotely dock their spacecraft. A Soviet volunteered to pilot the Soyuz command vehicle on a six-month Earth return mission originally meant for two PRK cosmonauts, with the additional rations saved for the Martian crews. NASA, Roscosmos, and Helios followed suit sharing command structure in the first integrated Mars program with the North Koreans, combining resources to supply, return, and replace their personnel over the following year into late 1996, when Sojourner 2 would be ready for the next large-scale Mars transit mission. The coalition would eventually form the Mars 7 Treaty Alliance with four other nations joining the multinational effort into the 21st century. The Soviets repurposed their N-1 Soyuz support vehicle, which was a larger version of PRK-1483, powered by a more efficient nuclear thermal drive, launched in February 95, adjusted from the original timetable set for January. Instead of transporting two replacement cosmonauts and MPAC-94 mission logistics, the new relief payload would be an unmanned Soyuz command and service module filled with emergency cargo supplies. Arriving in August 1996, the Soyuz N-1 cargo rocket would dock and transfer cargo to the Phoenix, adding a Mars return lander before transporting two more crew back to Earth on board the command module. Despite reducing the total number down to 20 over both previous Earth return missions, the N-1 supply rocket was designed to support seven cosmonauts from the Mars 94 mission. Strict rationing with only essential operations would be mounted on the surface. This would continue for Happy Valley and the Phoenix until the next relief mission could reach the station. NASA, on a joint venture with Helios Aerospace, finished trial runs with its enhanced OB-200 series plasma fusion drives for 60-day Mars shuttle transit runs. This new propulsion was a smaller production variant for the larger Mars transport ship engines now in the initial construction phases. The OV-202 Vanguard completed lunar test flights in quarter one of 1995 and was ready for the July Mars launch window. Arriving in September of the same year, the Vanguard crew of two delivered essential payloads along with an additional MSAM giving Phoenix Station two Mars transport vehicles. With the successful evacuation of five crew members over three missions, the new shipment of relief cargo now could adequately support the remaining 18 personnel. But tragically, another casualty occurred days before the Vanguard's arrival. 
Over the following year, another Soyuz N1 cargo rocket and two more retrofitted Mars Transit OV shuttles delivered adequate mission payload stocks while reducing the International Mars program to an essential crew count total of 12, with eight on board Phoenix Station and four personnel operating Happy Valley Outpost on the surface. In January 1997, Sojourner 2 arrived with its crew of four, replacing the last eight astronauts and cosmonauts who had spent over two years on Mars, embarking on the three-way space race back in the fall of 1994. Additionally, the famous Martian-born baby that spent the first two years of his life on the Phoenix Station's artificial gravity ring is now old enough to be safely returned to Earth. Equipped with a new and enhanced Nerva Fusion drive systems, Sojourner 2 surpassed OV-205's Mars transit record by 8 days, until Sojourner 3 later that year achieved the highest TMI rate of just under 45 days for the total transit time. 1998 through 2003 would usher in large-scale expansions of Phoenix Station and the Mars Colony with a new fleet of large fusion-powered Mars transit ships made possible through the combined efforts of the M7 treaty nations and private industry, which will be covered in Part 4 of For All Mankind space programs. He raised this question, is For All Mankind a predecessor to the Expanse Universe, or possibly the foundation for Starfleet and United Earth in the Star Trek verse? I will post a poll in the channel's community section where you can vote on this hypothetical crossover. For the channel's previous episodes covering For All Mankind, hit subscribe and make sure to hit the notification bell for future sci-fi expeditions. Also, feel free to check out extensive breakdowns of Star Trek and The Expanse in the channel's playlist sections. Once again, thank you for watching and have a nice soul. Just recently, it has been revealed through body language that there will be a season 5 of For All Mankind.